In this tutorial, we will be discussing electron configurations and the Aufbau principle. According to quantum mechanics, electron location around the atom's nucleus is described by four quantum numbers, n, which is the energy level, l, which defines s, p, d, or f, m sub l, which is which orbital of these suborbitals, and m sub s, the spin of the electron of n orbital. No two electrons can have the same four quantum numbers. This is called the Pauli exclusion principle. When we're writing an electron configuration, we need to in, we need to signify the energy level, which is n, the orbital type, which is l, and the number of electrons. So m sub l and m sub s aren't really involved in the electron configuration itself, but it is embedded because of the fact that that determines how many electrons we're allowed to have in each orbital. Remember, just in case, 0 for L is S, 1 is P, 2 is D, and 3 is F. Electrons are arranged around the atom's nucleus according to the Aufbau principle. Electrons enter the lowest energy level first, so the lowest n first, and the orbitals that are available. This is called the n plus l rule. Electrons will enter lowest energy subshell, subshell l that is empty and that energy level n. So let's compare 2s and 2p. Which will the electron go into first, the s or the p? Well, if we do the n plus l rule, n is 2 and l for s is 0, so 2 plus 0 is 2. For 2p, n is 2 still. Now l is 1 because it's p, so 2 plus 1 is 3. Because 2 is smaller, it's going to enter the 2s orbital first. This is the arrangement of the orbitals by energy. 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p. Notice it goes to 4s before it goes to 3d. I'm going to show you another way to remember this rather than just remembering that chart or doing the n plus 1 rule, or n plus l rule. Aufbau is German for the words build up. It's a pattern of, or, of orbital filling lower energy first. So first thing we're going to do is write down all our possibilities. So 1s2, and we're going to write them by energy level. So 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d10. 4s2, 4p6, 4d10, 4f14. Now we go to the fifth energy level. Now the sixth. Once you get to f, Notice I didn't have another one out here. That's because there's not enough elements to actually constitute having those orbitals. And we're going to stop at 7. Because that's how many that's how many rows there are on the periodic table. All right. Now draw arrows diagonally to determine where the electrons are added. So this is what I mean. Draw down. So notice it goes 2p6 then 3s2, then 3p6, it goes to 4s2, and then back up to 3d10, 4p6, 5s2. If we look at the chart we had before, 3p6, 4s2, then it goes back to 3d, and then it goes back to 4p, then 5s, which is what this is showing us. And this is getting sloppy, but I wanted to make sure that you knew how to recreate this chart if you needed to. 
All right. This is a better looking chart here. Notice once we get to F, yeah, there's other orbitals out here, but they're never going to be used, so we're not going to worry about it. And we can actually use this chart when we're trying to determine the electron configurations because this chart shows us where the electrons are going to go first because of the order of energy levels. So write the electron configuration for lithium. First thing you want to do is look on the periodic table and find the atomic number. The atomic number is three, which means that if it's a neutral atom, there's three electrons. I'm making sure you realize that if it's only if it's neutral, because three, the atomic number, don't forget, is the number of protons. So if it's neutral, the protons and electrons are going to equal each other. S's are always twos maximum, P's are always a six maximum, and D's are always a 10 maximum, and F is always a 14. And that has to do with how many suborbitals there are. So P has three different orientations, so therefore each orientation has two electrons for a total of six. All right, so we need to make sure that these little numbers here count up to three. So 1s2, we have two electrons taken care of. We need one more, so we go to the next line, 2s1. Even though I have room for two electrons, I only need one more. So that's why it ends in 2s1. Now to look at the energy diagram for this, once again, lithium has the atomic number of three. So to be neutral, it must have three electrons because three means that there's three protons. The electron configuration is 1s2, 2s1. So in the first energy level, 1s, there's two arrows, one going down, one going up. And then 2s1, there's only one arrow because we only need one arrow. Let's try one more. We'll try nitrogen. Atomic number is seven which by definition means that there are seven protons. If it's neutral, that means we also have seven electrons. So that means these little numbers have to equal seven. So first go through the first line, 1s2. We have, we're starting off with seven, we have two, we need five more. The next line, 2s2. We had five, now we need three more. So when we go to the next line, I have room for six. I only need three of them. If you just follow the lines, you can do every single element on the periodic table doing this method. So N has an atomic number of seven. So to be neutral, it has to have seven electrons. Therefore, as we determined on the previous slide, 1s2, 2s2, 2p3, is the electron configuration. This is the first time we've seen Hund's rule. When placing electrons in a set of orbitals having the same energy, which is called degenerate orbitals, the electrons are placed singly as long as possible. So they want to be as spread out as possible. Remember, electrons are negative. Every single one of them. That means that they're trying to repel each other because they're like charges. And so in order to repel each other and to be the most stable, there's one in each box. Notice that they're all going the same direction. It could be all up or all down. It doesn't matter as long as they're all going the same direction. As the energy increases, it fills from bottom up. So in 1s, there's two electrons. In 2s, there's two electrons. In 2p, we only needed three, so x, y, and z. And that gives you an an explanation on how to finish electron configurations.